Hey guys, Andy here. So most people will spend 20 to 40 pounds on a light for their bike. I'm not most people. Um, as you may remember, my rear lights are radar. It's also quite bright, so I'm sort of happy with my rear lights, but I thought if I'm gonna be commuting perhaps in the dark, you know, it gets dark by half four now, or even just wanna go for a ride in the evening, I wanna have a good front light on my bike. So I started asking about, uh, asking for advice, and one of the sort of one direct quote was, just get the most expensive exposure light you can afford. Okay, so I looked into a bit of the exposure lights and I didn't go for the most expensive because that's an exposure six pack and it's like 435 pounds for a bike light. 435 pounds, that's more than some people spend on their bike. Um, I thought it was a little mad going 330 for, for two lights. Um, but when you're spending that much on lights, people want to know what they're getting for their money, and that's a prompt for me to make a video, which is what I've done. So, as I mentioned, I bought two different lights. I wanted one that would fix to my handlebars and one that would attach to my helmet. Um, so I went with the Exposure Race Mark 15 for the handlebars, which is 250 pound. And for my helmet, the Exposure Axis Mark 7, which was about 114. But let's take a look at the Race Mark 15. Uh, it comes with a handlebar mount with a quick release kind of switch. It goes up to 2,200 lumens. It's got like, I don't know, 12 different modes, I think each of which can switch between high, medium and low. Um, it switches modes using the button on the back. You've also got an LED on the back to track which mode you're in, um, the setting that you're on, and the battery life left. It's got a 5,800 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty big. I mean, that's bigger than most mobile phones will have, um, which means you're gonna get from two to 36 hours of battery life. And obviously that depends on what mode you're in, how, you know, the brighter, the more intense power uh, is gonna use the battery quicker. I think from my experience, you're probably gonna get through in sort of three to four hours, unless you're just commuting on one of the very low modes, then you could get up to the 36 that I mentioned. Um, it's also got Reflex Plus technology, which kind of monitors the movement, your speed, the motion, and in theory, when you're off-road and things are getting more intense, it gets brighter for you. Um, I was advised not to use that mode when you're cycling on the road because you're always going so quick that it always thinks, oh my God, light everything up, and you're gonna risk dazzling oncoming drivers. Um, the whole thing, it feels very sturdy and solid, and I would say it only weighs 186 grams, so I think that's quite light for the size of the light. Let's flip over and look at the Axis Mark 7. Um, it mentions, actually, this is made of anodized aluminium. It doesn't, it didn't mention that on the other light what it was made of, actually. Uh, this one goes up to 1,150 lumens, in much the same way as the other one, there's different modes that you change using the button on the back. It comes with a helmet mount as well as a handlebar mount. What I quite like is one of the modes allows tap controls and you can literally just tap your helmet, not even the light, tap your helmet to rotate through the high, medium and low. And that worked really well. It wasn't often that it didn't operate. It, it seemed to work very well. The battery in this one, because it's very small, uh, light, quite impressive, it's got a 3,400 milliamp hour battery. And much like the Race Mark 15, the Axis Mark 7 will go from one and a half hours to 36 hours, again, depending on which mode and how bright you have the light. Uh, this only weighs 102 grams, so not really much of an extra weight on your helmet, and it is IP6 waterproof. And again, I didn't notice in the listing what the Race Mark 15 is listed at, but again, I, I mean, I used it in the rain, no problems at all. I'd be reasonably certain it's, uh, set up to work in those kind of conditions. So how do I then review bike lights? Um, I can tell you it was not as easy as I thought because my plan was, yeah, I'll just go out riding around, I'll just film me and show what, what sort of effect they have. But actually a GoPro 9 black, as expensive and as good as it is, in dark conditions, in literally in the pitch black with just these lights, it struggles a bit. So you, you don't get to see what I see you know, it can't replicate the human eye. Um, so 
it, a lot of it's going to be just me explaining what, what they do. What I could do though was use my sort of bigger censored, more expensive this camera in the back garden. So I tested, first of all, we'll look at, so I think, I can't remember if it's dusk or early morning, but the first light we, I'm gonna show you is my sort of, I don't know, 20 pound, I think it was 200 lumens bike light. I mean, it's okay, it's more about sort of being seen, I think, perhaps it doesn't really light much up. Let me move on to the Axis Mark 7. I think it's pretty apparent on the, even on the video that it's a lot brighter, it's much brighter. Um, you can see a lot better. And then if we finally move on to the Race Mark 15, which is a much broader light, but again, much brighter. We're gonna move on to actually this bit now is at night. We're gonna go through the same sort of process of the three different lights. Again, it's in my back garden, so we're using a half decent camera. And as you can see, the cheap light, I mean, it illuminates bits. But as we move on to the Axis Mark 7, again, you can see that is so much brighter. It's still quite focused, it's still quite a spotlight. Um, and then as we move on to the Race Mark 15, I don't know how well it shows in the video, but again, this is just everything is illuminated better. It's not just the focused spotlight, it's just, it is illuminating everything in front of you. And it is just so bright. It does such a good job of illuminating. So let's take a look at them on the road. So at this point, I've got the Axis Mark 7 attached to my helmet and I've got the Race Mark 15 attached to my handlebars. And honestly, it worked, I mean, probably better than I really imagined or planned initially. So the expensive Race Mark 15 just illuminates generally in front of me. Um, whereas the Axis Mark 7 on my helmet would give a spotlight to whatever it is that I'm actually looking at. Um, what I did find myself doing, I was switching through from the high, medium to low as oncoming traffic came to try and make sure I didn't dazzle them with the Mark 15. And with the helmet mounted light, I just sort of made sure I was kind of angled that off slightly into the verge uh, when cars approach, just to make sure I didn't dazzle it. That'd be the worst thing. I want to make sure I'm being seen, but then I dazzle the oncoming driver, blind them, and they run me over because they can't see anything. Um, so actually fantastic combination of lights. So they do seem very well made um, with some interesting tech angles like the Reflex Plus, uh, great battery life, various bits of tech in there to sort of control the thermal throttling just in case they do get too hot. Clearly I could see a lot more than my 20 pound light. But I guess the question still is, are they worth it? And to be honest, you know, I get this when I review phones. People ask me, is, is it worth it? Should I buy it? But value and worth is different for each person, isn't it really? So yeah, I'm quite happy with them. I didn't send them back and think, oh, I'll get some achievement. No, no, these are good lights. I can see where I'm going. People can see me. But you could probably spend 80 pound to 100 pound and have a similar experience. Whether or not the quality would be quite the same. Maybe the battery life wouldn't be quite as good as well. Maybe there won't be quite as many options like the sort of tap to change. Um, so I get it. I get why people are saying exposure lights are the best. I don't think I've seen anything that could argue against that. Whether or not you, uh, whether or not it's worth it to you, whether or not it's a good idea for you to spend 300 pounds on this similar sort of light setup, that's that's up for you to decide. Um, hopefully I've given you the information that will enable you to make that decision though. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you use other lights, let me know down there. If you use exposure and you agree, let me know, or, or that you disagree, let me know. I do read all of the comments. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. I do have quite a lot of other videos on sort of cycling, either technology or accessories or bikes themselves. So do check those out. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click that bell and everyone says it and people get annoyed being told to do that, but it just means that you don't miss any of my videos. Um, but for now, my name's Andy and I'll catch you all again soon.